Hey, what's up folks, Realtor Chris Hall. I wanna talk about the NAR lawsuit and how personally, I don't think it's gonna change much. So as we move through this video, understand I'm not a licensed attorney, so I'm not gonna be reading too many contract stuff and I'm not gonna be talking too many contractual terms. Cause like I said, I'm a real estate agent, not a licensed attorney. But one thing I wanted to read that's in the new buyer rep agreement, which I actually like the way it says here, or like the way it reads. It says, client grants to broker the exclusive right to act as client's real estate agent to provide services as more specifically described in section seven below for the purpose of purchasing or leasing properties in the state of Texas and generally described as following. So what that's saying is basically is real estate agents are now going to be encouraged much more to get a buyer's rep sign with their buyers. I'm all for that. I really am at the end of the day. But let's talk about that lawsuit and then we'll circle back to a little bit more about these new buyer reps. <clears throat> So basically this lawsuit, in my humble opinion, is a bunch of BS. It kind of reminds me of the lawsuits that went after the tobacco industry years ago because, well, I guess people didn't know that smoking was bad for you. And then when the, when the attorneys won and the tobacco industries lost, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there was a lot of families that were actually helped, but there was a few attorneys that made a shitload of money. And I think that's what's happening right now. You have these attorneys, maybe they found an opportunity to say, hey, we can go after that industry. I'm doing an open house, so if somebody walks in, I might have to put this video on pause. Um, but where was I? I heard something, lost my train of thought. But anyways, there's a lot of, there's attorneys that are, this is the part that just doesn't make any sense to me. So the attorneys essentially are suing real estate brokerages saying that they're making too much money on consumers while they're making, I could be wrong, but I think it's like 30 or 40% of the payout of the lawsuit. So that just seems kind of interesting, the fact that the attorneys are suing because brokerages make too much money, but those attorneys are gonna make a ton of money if this lawsuit goes through, which it looks like it is. So at the end of the day though, I don't think it changes anything because the conversation that these attorneys are trying to force or this lawsuit rather is trying to enforce. Th these are conversations that I've been having with sellers since I've been licensed. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, this is what I like to charge on my commission. Oh, are you buying a home? Okay, well maybe we can work on this or maybe we can work on that or whatever it might be. I've never had a fixed commission. Nobody has a fixed commission. But a lot of the consumers out there think that six per six, six percent is a fixed standard rate. It's not the case. Um, so the conversation that needs to be taking place now is the same conversation that I've been having with sellers for years, the pros and cons and what might happen if you give this or you give that, or maybe you only do this, or maybe you don't give anything at all. And you know what, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, at the end of the day, it's your home. This is just kind of what I've noticed the market do. What would you like to do moving forward? And I've had people pick all around. And I've had people maybe pick a little bit lower commission. Then we put their house up on the market and it doesn't sell. And then maybe they change it or maybe they change the price. <clears throat> this is nothing new. I hear some real estate agents that are just blown away and they're so confused. It's like, well, maybe if you were having these conversations with your sellers in the past, we wouldn't be in this position in the first place. So there's some stuff that I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable saying on this video, but I do think it's interesting how some real estate agents have perceived commissions over the years. The one good thing I would say, well, I think there's a couple of good things that is gonna come from this lawsuit, is one, consumers are gonna be more aware of where the commissions are coming from and where they're going. And it's really tough to say. Some people say the seller pays the commission, some people say the buyer pays the commission. Um, I mean, technically, when you look at the paperwork, it is the seller, but it's kind of like tomato, tomato, chicken, egg versus chicken, like which one's first? Like if the commissions weren't on the home, would the home sell for less? Probably not, because if the other homes are selling in the area, then the seller's gonna wanna sell for the most amount of money possible. And it's been my experience of almost two decades of real estate that if somebody doesn't wanna use an agent, they are one of two things. They're knowledgeable enough in the industry that they don't feel like they need representation or they're ignorant enough about the industry that they don't think that they need representation. I'd say the latter of the two is a little bit harder to work with because it's really hard to work with somebody that thinks they know everything but doesn't really know much at all. So those transactions have a tendency to be much more difficult because then if I'm the listing agent, 
well, if I'm not representing the buyer, but the buyer wants to represent themselves, well, it's still my goal at the end of the day to keep the transaction together because the sellers paid me to do that. So I have to kind of coach the buyer throughout the transaction. And oftentimes those buyers have a tendency to be pretty nasty because they get, they get scared, they get stressed out. And most people in that position aren't calm and cool enough to keep their cool. They just get nasty, they get frustrated. So like it's difficult because then you're trying to, you know, explain like, hey, buyer, I'm not trying to screw you over. We all have the same goal at the end of the day. We all want to close on the property. So quit trying to fight me so much. Let's just get that closed. I think sellers will recognize that, that when they go to sell a home, let's just say they decide, hey, you know what? We don't want to pay an agent commission at all. None at all. Okay, that's fine. But understand that the people that you're gonna attract are gonna be a certain type of buyer. So you might actually sell for less than if you were offering a little bit of commission. Maybe not, I don't know. I'm no Nostradamus, but I'm just assuming most good agents aren't going to work to work for free. Oh, by the way, there are also these things called relocation buyers. And sometimes those relocation buyers actually get compensated based on the percentage of the commission that's being paid out for that particular listing. So there's a lot of different variables that go into it that I think a lot of sellers don't take into consideration, but I think now they actually will. And I think more buyers will take this into consideration because as sad as it might sound, if you took a hundred real estate agents and stuck them in a room right now, ah, maybe not right now because the market's been a little bit more different than in years past, but I'd say definitely a year and a half ago, if you took a hundred real estate agents, if you got five that really knew what they were doing, I'd be surprised. There's a lot of five fly by night real estate agents. There's a lot of part-time real estate agents that just say they're a part-time real estate agent so they have something to say that they do but they don't really know what they're doing in fact i'll tell you a funny story um i've had this happen on more than one occasions where maybe i'll have a client and they'll buy a home from me and then they'll live in that home and then maybe one of their friends or somebody will get into real estate right around the time where they're thinking about buying a new home and then maybe they'll buy and sell through that friend and then that friend gets out of the real estate industry. Well, and then a few more years pass by and well, they wanna buy and sell that home. They wanna buy a new home and sell that home and then they'll reach back out to me because that relationship that they had, well, it went away because they got out of real estate. And then they're like, oh my gosh, Chris, it was so crazy working with that person. They made this mistake, they made that mistake. Or sometimes they don't even realize the mistakes that they made and then I'll sit down and look at all the paperwork and I'm like, holy moly, this agent made a whole bunch of mistakes. So I think by people understanding where the commission's coming from and where it's going, they're gonna be less inclined to just use their buddy that just got into real estate just because they like him and they have a big smile. They're probably gonna be more inclined to go with somebody that they at least perceive as being an expert that's actually moving some properties, kind of knows what they're doing. Once again, if you think that the commission is just built into the cost and it's gonna be there anyway, well, why not give it to a friend? But if it's actually something that you can negotiate as a buyer, or at least something that you're aware of as a buyer, well, maybe then you'd be less inclined to use a friend or less inclined to use somebody that dabbles in real estate. Because once again, if you're paying that money and you know you're paying that money, you probably want to get some value out of it. It's also been my experience over the years that most people don't mind paying for somebody's services as long as they feel like the money is worth the service that they're receiving. So like I said, at the end of the day, I really don't think that this lawsuit is going to change most real estate agents and their business. But anyways, <clears throat> I don't think it's gonna change much. I think sellers still understand that if they wanna sell their home, they're gonna have to work with buyer agents to get the property sold. So. Just smoke and mirrors and ways for attorneys to make monies. That's, that's my thought on the whole process. I'm not going to allow it to affect me too much and I'm gonna keep doing what I keep doing. I hope you do the same.